It's been 17 years since we've seen a Ford Mustang Mach 1. And as you guys know, with this current sixth generation Mustang, it is due for a next generation in the next coming year. So for 2021, Ford has decided to bring back that coveted Mach 1 badge into the lineup as a replacement for the dead Bullet and of course the Shelby GT350. Ford is billing this new Mach 1 as the most track capable Mustang GT ever because it has the five liter Coyote V8 making 480 horsepower, the availability of a Tremec six speed manual or a 10 speed automatic. So if you guys have been waiting nearly 20 years for Ford to return the Mach 1 branded Mustang, was this new version worth the wait? Stay tuned to find out. So with any muscle car, I wanna first start with what's going on underneath the hood. Now, those of you who are sad about the departure of the old Shelby GT350, I actually never had a chance to actually drive or review that car for you guys. I, you will be sad to learn that this Mach 1 does not have the 5.2 liter flat plane crank uh, V8 that you got in the Shelby that made you know, over 520 horsepower that revved to 8,000 RPM. Instead, we have the same motor from the Bullet, but it does get some goodies, of course, from the Shelby GT350. Now looking at the engine compartment, you can see the five liter Coyote V8. This engine has been in production since 2011, so almost a decade. Ford has made improvements to it over the years. And this is essentially the same engine that we had in the Bullet. So compared to a standard GT, you get 20 more horsepower. So a total of 480 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque. Those numbers are obviously nothing to sneeze at. Yes, it's not quite as powerful as the Shelby GT350, but it has almost the same amount of torque. And yes, it doesn't rev quite as high, but this motor will still rev to around 7,500 RPM. So it is a fantastic motor. That's a big middle finger to all the electric cars out on the road. Now it does get some goodies from the Shelby. It has the same intake manifold from the Shelby. It has the same uh, oil cooling um, system. It has a performance tuned ECU for this motor. And that's why it essentially makes more power and it makes it feel a little bit more special than what you get in a garden variety GT. Now, unlike the Bullet Mustang, this is available with a 10-speed automatic. My tester has the 10-speed auto. You can also get a six-speed Tremec manual transmission. The Tremec manual is different from the Getrack manual that you had in the Bullet. I didn't love that transmission as much in the Bullet. Sad to say that I haven't driven the Mach 1 with the Tremec. That's the same transmission that you got out of the Shelby GT350. Now, of course, all Mach 1s are only rear-wheel drive, all Mustangs. Uh, coupes and convertibles are only rear-wheel drive. Uh, and the automatic transmission model that I'm showing you here does not have a limited slip differential. You only get that with the manual. So enthusiasts out there, I'd probably say skip the automatic and go for the manual transmission model. Now, despite the, you know, the fact that this isn't designed for straight line acceleration, you should be doing zero to 60 in the round the low four second range. Uh, depending on how good you are uh, at the track and how good you are with your, your shifting, if you guys have the manual transmission model. And fuel economy, in case you care, this is rated to get 15 in the city, 23 on the highway. It's a little bit less versus a standard GT because of the gearing. Uh, premium gas is recommended for performance, and as this one sits, it weighs in at around 3,800 pounds. So let's talk about the styling briefly with the all new 2021 Ford Mustang Mach 1. Now there are a lot of heritage design elements here to kind of give this car a little bit more character than your, just your garden variety Mustang, even just a regular garden variety, you know, Mustang GT. I think this car looks a lot better versus the Bullet. The Bullet is designed to be more of an understated type of car. This one here really shouts. It kind of reminds you that this is a special Mustang, unlike the Bullet, which could be, you know, just thought of as a rental car uh, from certain angles, but you can see here, the shaker hood that we found on the previous generation is not here. I believe you can get it as a dealer accessory. Instead, you have these really cool graphics on the hood with the very cool retro designed 1970s Mach 1 badge with the orange stripe. The vents here on the hood are functional. So even though you don't have a shaker hood, at least Ford gave you some functional heat extractor vents. And then the front fascia has the newer front end, which the Shelby did not have. And you have these uh, hood vents that are basically to the left and to the right of the running pony logo. These surprisingly are not opened, although I think that you could probably take these out and, and make them functional. I'm not sure why Ford didn't just go ahead and make them functional. You get uh, full LED headlights as standard with LED daytime running lights, uh, LED low and high beams, and LED turn signals, which are down there. No fog lights on this refreshed Mustang, as you can see, but the front splitter definitely looks pretty cool. My tester is missing a track handling package that would make the front end look even more aggressive. But overall, in this fighter jet gray, this is a signature color on the Mach 1. You can't get this color on any other Mustang. It does look particularly nice, but my tester, like I said earlier, is missing the very, very aggressive track handling package, which would give it 
kind of like a Shelby GT500 in the way it looks. Now, because this is just the standard Mach 1, uh, you do have these optional wheels that my tester has. These are a 19 inch wheel. Uh, with, with five spoke design, you have these orange painted calipers with four piston or six piston, I'm sorry, Brembo brakes, massive rotors, as you can see. And the tires themselves have a nice meaty, chunky sidewall. So that's going to, again, give you that retro design theme. These brakes are phenomenal out on the street. Uh, and they also look good, especially with the orange accents. And you can see here, beautiful Mach 1 1970s design font on the side to remind everybody that you have a special Mustang. And when you back away from the car, you can see this is definitely not a small car, uh, but this generation has definitely aged well. I think it looks fantastic still. I love some of the elements. I love that this is not quite as big as something like a Dodge Challenger at 188.7 inches long. The Mach 1 also has these kind of gray painted mirrors Although I do wish that Ford offered like a sunroof or some kind of black roof option on the Mach 1. My tester doesn't have that look. But as you can see here, looking at the rear three quarter view, you can see the rear tires definitely have a chunkier feel. These are uh, 275 width tires in the back versus the 255s in the front. So you do have staggered wheels. And if you guys go for the track handling package, they'll give you a nice bigger wheel, a pedestal wing, a pedestal style wing that does add down force along with some gurney flaps that you can get on the Shelby GT500. This one here, as you can see, has the more you know, subtle rear deck lid spoiler, which some of you may prefer that. Although I think if I was gonna go for this car, I would just go for the all or nothing and get the big fancy wing. Now over here, you can see you have the same taillights with the sequential LEDs and you have the Mach 1 badge there instead of the running horse logo. And then down here, you can see the exhaust system. This is the active Ford exhaust system, which does come standard on the Mach 1. Looking at the trunk capacity, this is a Mustang, so you need to be able to use it to carry things. Uh, you still have the same 13 and a half cubic foot trunk. Uh, my tester does have a subwoofer here that does take up a little bit of space, uh, but the seats still fold down in a 60-40 manner. So this is one of the more practical muscle cars. So let's briefly show you guys the interior of the 2021 Mustang Mach 1. First of all, here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see it's the older Ford key. It's a very large key, but at least it includes remote start. So all you have to do is just double tap that button there. And that big nasty V8 fires up and it gives you that classic rumble that you expect from a Mustang. Now, as I open the door here and look at the interior, you're gonna notice this interior looks pretty similar to the last GT Mustang that you've seen with the premium package. Although I love the orange accents, how it's carried over into the interior. This is the black interior with the contrasting white stitching. The door panels, you can see, have the upgraded material with a soft touch injection molded plastic here. You have three person memory seats. You have automatic window controls. This interior definitely is starting to show its age a little bit in terms of the tech. It's the older Ford system, but Ford has done a good job at making this interior still look pretty good. The seats are heated and cooled, which is nice. You have a six way power driver's seat over there. Uh, which is great, or I'm sorry, it's an eight-way power driver's seat, and you can see the steering wheel looks good, although it's not the flat bottom wheel that you get from the Shelby models, which again, were discontinued. Now, as I get inside this vehicle, it has a pretty low step in height, and then when I shut the door, the door still has a nice, solid-sounding thunk. To get it out of the remote start mode, just put your foot on the brake, push the button here to fire it up, or to turn everything on, and there you can see the full digital My Color display here is right in front of you. It looks good. You can kind of customize this um, to a certain way where you could change the color of the gauges. You can see right now it's matching the orange that you get all over the outside. If I go to like, for example, the track mode, you can see the exhaust gets even louder and it puts the tack right there at the very top. <laughs> Yeah, this is the kind of car that really is a big middle finger to electric cars and it's gonna wake up your neighbors constantly if you guys fire it up in track mode. Now, let's just briefly go over some of the differences. Obviously, you're gonna get a Mach, a Mach 1 placard here to show to show off that this is a limited production car. It's a little more special, of course, than a GT. Uh, this one here has the upgraded interior material, so you have the stitching on the dual cowls here. You have this aluminum trim. You have an oil pressure and a vacuum gauge there, which is nice. You have the eight inch Ford Sync 3 a head unit here, which is fine. It includes wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. The screen itself definitely isn't as crystal clear as what you see in some of the newer Ford Sync 4 systems, like in the Mach-E, but it gets the job done. And at times I did notice it's a little slow to respond. You can see there's the map display there, which is technically the uh, Android Auto or the Waze display. Uh, but overall, I've shown you guys this system before. It's nothing new about it. You do get a backup camera, of course, which has trajectory and the graphics do look a little bit, uh, a little crunchy. Uh, down here, you can see a big volume knob and tuning knob, heated and cooled seats. I love the red start stop button. And then of course these toggles here, uh, which 
uh, are really a bunch of a throwback. I love how they're metal trimmed. Uh, the automatic transmission, you can see it has a traditional shifter. It's very simple. You do have paddles on the wheel, which is nice. You have all these buttons on the steering wheel. You can control the my mode system. You can go into the exhaust mode here and change if you want it to start in like loud mode. If you push this little button there, you can see you can adjust all your different settings. So there's a little bit of a learning curve in here and some people may find this distracting how there's all these buttons here. But uh, going to the track apps here, you can see you'll find things like an acceleration timer, brake performance, line lap, lap timer. But this one here doesn't have launch control, I'm surprised. Like even if I go to the acceleration timer, it shows you like a zero to 60, but there's no way that I can do a launch control start in this vehicle. So um, we'll go into the driving scene mode later on and we'll show you guys a little bit more on what, that, what that's about. Now over here, you can see the center console is wrapped in leather in this upgraded model, which is nice. Big cup holders if, over here, you have a traditional handbrake uh, and you can see decent sized storage in the center console with your USB port. There's another USB port right here. And these seats, these are not the Recaro seats that you can get for $1,600, but these are heated and cooled, which wouldn't come on the Recaro seats. And the leather is also pretty soft and comfortable, but they just don't hug you in place as the Recaro. So for repeated track use, I'd probably recommend that. Over here, you can see the glove compartment is a bin style. It's damped, but not lined with felt. And then above me, no sunroof. Instead, you do have some regular incandescent lighting, no LED lighting. And then the back seat, well, there's about 30 or 29 inches of legroom back there and it really only seats two. So it's just there essentially to fold down the seats or carry packages or put people that you hate in the back seat. So overall the interior isn't really much different from a standard GT, a couple of special badges and some orange trim, but it didn't really need to be. I'm ex excited to see what Ford does for the next generation Mustang when that com comes out in the next couple of years. So here we are driving the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach 1, and we haven't seen this nameplate for nearly 20 years, like I mentioned earlier. And for those of you who have never really heard of the Mach 1, you'll probably just think, oh, it's just another GT, you know, with the performance package that has a different styling elements. Well, this nameplate has a lot more to do with it. However, Ford has positioned this version to be replacing essentially three Mustangs. We're replacing the GT with the Performance Pack 2, we're replacing the Shelby GT350, and we're replacing the Mustang Bullet. And with nearly 500 horsepower under the hood, <laughs> this car is certainly no slouch. Yes, it doesn't have quite as much power as the old Shelby GT350. I am sad that Ford didn't want to put the, uh, the Voodoo flat plane crank 5.2 liter V8 in this thing, but the five liter is also a great motor, so we can't discount the fact that they did put the five liter in this vehicle. It is a wonderful car. I am a little sad that Ford gave me one that has the 10 speed automatic, but the 10 speed is certainly no slouch. <laughs> and the one thing about this car that I'm noticing is it doesn't really quite have launch control the way the manual transmission does, but we're gonna go ahead and try to do a launch in this thing which the automatic does come with a drag strip mode. So essentially you put it into drag strip mode, see what it can do. Oh God. <laughs> um, well, I got zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds. <laughs> this one, this one doesn't have the track handling package, so it doesn't have the, the Pilot's Cup Sport Cup 2 tires. Instead, we've got the Pilot Sport 4S tires, which are great tires as well. But you guys know Mustangs, they're kind of known for being a little bit skittish at times. They're known for eating crowds. I probably could do a better run if I was on a prep surface. That's the problem with these rear drive cars. And the fact that I don't know if the 10 speed has a dedicated launch control feature. It still kind of gets a little squirmy when you try to uh, accelerate this thing with brake torquing it. It doesn't always hold the brake properly. We'll try it again. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the 10 speed is definitely a great transmission. It's it qu it shifts quickly. It puts the engine right in the meat the meat of its power band, but I think this car would definitely be more fun with the manual. The manual is the one I really wanted to try because it's the Tremec unit from the Shelby as opposed to the Bullet that I drove last year which had the Getrack system. That one just wasn't quite as good as the Tremec. But because I'm not in a drag strip, I'm not gonna be able to get the best launch for this vehicle. So basically the quickest I've seen is 4.3 seconds. That's what uh, 
car driver quoted with the manual transmission. The automatic on the right surface with the right driver, you could probably get it to the low fours, but I'm on public roads and I'm not gonna do that. Instead, we're just gonna enjoy the car for what it is out on the street. <laughs> and this transmission really does a great job of just reading your mind. It is so quick shifting. It's not dual clutch quick, but for a torque converter automatic that was co-developed with GM, it's a great partner for those of you who don't want to drive stick because driving stick nowadays has just become a, a rare occurrence, especially in the world that we live in with electrification. But this car is definitely a throwback. It just sounds good. It feels like a big muscle car. It accelerates well. The rumble from the exhaust system is fantastic. And the beauty about this car is it comes standard with the Magno Rheological damper, so we do have great ride quality when you're not hooning on this car. And in terms of just the regular driving experience, this is pretty identical to the last Mustang I drove. You have this big hood. Uh, the view out of the front is not bad. The view out of the rear also isn't bad by muscle car standards. This is still one of the easier cars to daily drive because of the visibility, because of the practicality nature. And then when you're ready to just pass anybody, you just put your foot down here and <laughs> I have the exhaust right now in its track setting. You can hear it's so bloody loud. It's basically wake up the neighbors. <laughs> this car is definitely going to make me miss muscle cars, old school muscle cars like this, because I mean, cars like even the Mustang Mach-E, I have a Mach-E GT on order, a Mach-E, not to be confused with the Mach-1 on order. Um, and this is just a completely different experience. This is an old school experience. <laughs> but even the paddles work pretty well. When I pull the paddle to downshift, it rev matches beautifully. <laughs> And yes, Mustangs can be a little bit of a handful, especially when you have a V8 and you don't know how to handle a rear drive car. But these sticky Pilot Sport 4S, two, or 4S tires are fantastic. They offer a great balance between wet and dry handling. And I actually prefer these on the road over the Cup 2s. So yes, this one's missing the track handling package, but I'm actually okay with that. Although I do like the wheels on the track handling package. That's probably one of my favorite looking wheels on a Mustang. But if you kind of just floor it from a stop here. <laughs> Surprisingly, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't spin the wheels as much as I thought I it would. So good job on Ford by choosing these tires. It still can be a little bit of a gnarly car at times if you don't know how to handle a rear drive vehicle. But again, the purpose of this car is to have fun and to listen to that V8. It also has Pretty good handling because the Mustang got an independent rear suspension and we have the front and rear subframes from the Shelby. We have really direct and communicative steering. And there's just plenty to like about this car. I mean, would, would I choose it over a GT with the performance package? <laughs> I mean, I like the additional 20 horsepower. You're not necessarily gonna feel it out on the road. <laughs> Yeah, I really like this automatic and this uh, combination a lot more than I thought I would. I don't think I'd, I'd like it more than the manual because of the direct, the direct connected feel. Whew. <laughs> but as a final, you know, sayonara to this generation, because, you know, Ford is working on an all new Mustang and there's rumors of it going electric, the actual coupe version going electric. This is a nostalgic driving experience and a nostalgic car and I think this is much more appealing than the Bullet last year. Although I don't think it's more appealing than a Shelby GT350, although you can't get the Shelby with an automatic if you must have an automatic transmission. So considering the fact that the last Mustang Mach 1 that we had was back in 2004, it had roughly 180 less horsepower. It was based off of the old generation Mustang that I really didn't like back in the 90s. This new version obviously is a lot more modern. It's significantly improved. And I think it definitely lives up to the Mach 1 name. Essentially what this car is, is a replacement for three different Mustangs. The Bullet is gone, the Shelby GT350 is gone, and of course the GT with the Performance Pack 2 is gone. With the right handling package or with the track handling package, this is definitely 
could be the most track capable version of the five liter Mustang. However, this one here with the automatic transmission is the more street focused version. And I have to say, you essentially buy this car because you have a soft spot for the Mach 1 badge and you want a Mustang that stands out over your garden variety GT. Because personally for me, I don't have any kind of connection to the Mach 1 uh, branded Mustangs because it was just before my time. I would probably just save my coin and just get a standard GT Mustang and get the right options for it. Uh, personally, if I was going to go for something more special, the Shelby GT350 would be the one I would want just because it has that special engine. This, however, is a lot better than the Bullet that I tested the last two years. Uh, but with the right options, this car could be worth it. And obviously, for those of you who have a soft spot in your heart for the Mach 1, it's great that Ford decided to bring this car back. Now, speaking of which, let's talk a little bit about the pricing because Ford didn't mention how many they're going to build for the 2022, 2021 model year or if they're going to continue it next year. They did that for the previous generation where they offered it in 2003 and in 2004. This car starts at $53,500 for the base version. Add two grand if you guys want the premium option model that has the uh, heated and cooled seats, the upgraded leather, the full digital 12 inch cluster that my tester has. So basically 55 grand. This makes this car about $12,000 more expensive than a comparable GT premium model. Um, but it also is a little bit more expensive than the Bullet. Although for the Bullet's money, you do get a car that looks significantly better. If you look at it from the other end of the spectrum, this is about seven grand cheaper than a, the cheapest Shelby GT350. But again, with the Shelby, you definitely get a more track focused car and a special engine. So it really is gonna come down to you know what your cup of tea is for Mustang. There's so many different flavors of this car. My tester here with the automatic, uh, with the upgraded wheels, the upgraded, slightly upgraded interior, the voice activated GPS stickers for just under 60 grand at 59.3. It does make this a little bit cheaper than some of the other Mach 1s that I've seen with the track handling package, because that's 3,500 bucks. But personally for me, if it was my money, I'd probably just get a standard GT, get the performance package because this car here is tuned for the street. Unless you actually plan to take it to the track, then I would probably get the track handling package and of course get it with the six speed manual transmission. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach 1. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.